Hello everyone, it's Mark Smith here. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful sunburst beaded earrings. And again, if you've never seen beaded before, this will be a really nice introduction, a very simple introduction, just, just to get you used to, to how seed beads work and how intricately detailed they are. But one thing you need to remember about seed beading, it's incredibly addictive. Just how addictive, tell me. In the comments bar underneath here, tell me how addictive seed beading is and how you discovered seed beading and, and tell me all about your seed beading journey. So just like and subscribe to Jewelry Maker channel and uh, who knows where we're going to see you next. So come and join me and we'll get started on the tutorial. So imagine the scene. You're going out for dinner this evening. You've got the perfect outfit. You haven't got any matching jewelry, but you've got a huge stash of seed beads at home. Why not make the perfect pair of earrings to go with the perfect outfit? And I think these sunburst earrings here, they look very intricate. They're incredibly simple. You need a minimum of gemstones. You need 12 gemstones for the pair, small amount of seed beads and very few tools. What you are going to need, let's have a little look. You will need some six millimeter gemstones. I've gone for Praynite. Then you also need two sizes of seed beads. You need an 8-0 and you also need an 11-0. Now, for those of you who haven't used seed beads before, I'll just quickly explain the, the numbering structure. The smaller the bead, the larger the number, okay? So this little green bead here is a size 11. Now the 11 denotes to the number of beads sat next to each other, whole side uppermost in a row is an inch. The silver ones here are an 8-0. Again, you have eight in a row, whole side uppermost to fill an inch. Then you also have a 6-0, which would be six beads. Then you even have a 15-0, which are the tiny little beads, which are 15. Okay, so the larger the bead, the smaller the number. Okay, so we've, we've gone over that. Obviously, then you will need some sort of finding for your, for your ear finding. So this is your shepherd's hook. And then tools you will need a size 12 or a size 10 needle, beading needle. Onto that needle, I've popped on 60 centimeters in length of a six pound fire line in white, which is my beading thread of choice. And then tools, you will need a sharp pair of scissors for your thread work and a pair of flat nose pliers from a basic toolkit. And you will use those to attach your shepherd's hook findings to your earring. So let's get started. So on my piece of thread here in front of me, I have threaded on alternating six of our silver atos and six of our prainite gemstones. Now what I'm going to do with about a six inch tail, I'm going to take both ends up together and I'm going to tie a single knot, nice and tight, followed by a double knot, which will secure your beads, and then I always, always do an extra knot just for luck. So when I lay that down on the board, you will see then that we have a circle of silver beads and our gemstones. So to make the sunburst earrings, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to sew away from the knot. So I'm going to take my needle through the next gemstone and exit through the first Ato bead that I come across. So first step, is we need to encase the exterior of the gemstones with a combination of beads. And that combination is as follows. We're going to pick up one 8 five of our little 11 O's, and these are our amazing green lined aquatic color, it's beautiful. Then another eight, and we're going to skip the gemstone and sew into the next 8 bead and that will encase the exterior of, if I place that down there, you can see we have a little curve of beads around the prey night. So we're going to repeat that all the way around. So that's one, one, two, three, four, five, and then our eight o. Now I'm using six millimeter beads here, but there's nothing stopping you using eight millimeter or four millimeter, just as long as you remember that you will have to either add or subtract seed beads from your exterior sections. So there's nothing stopping you if you wanted to, let's place that down, to actually leave it at that point. It makes a beautiful little flower already. 
but we're going to just do a little bit of embellishing. So what we're going to do next is I'm currently working in a clockwise direction. I'm going to flip my earring over and I'm going to work in an anti-clockwise direction now because what we're going to do is we're going to sew through the next available eight and we're going to sew through the five elevens. So this is actually strengthening the exterior of your, your piece of work because what we want to do is we want to fill the space now in between your exterior eight O's and we're going to fill that space with a little 11 O. So we're just going to fill the gap and then we're going to sew all the way around. And again, this is why I'm using a size 12 needle because there's lots of passes through the beads and you need a fine thread and you also need a fine needle. So I'm using one color completely on this tutorial, but there'd be nothing stopping you mixing and matching. You can go down the rainbow route, you could go classic black and gold, so you can use all sorts of different color combinations. I'd love to see your, your pieces as well. So make sure you, that you, um, you like and, and subscribe and uh, show, us your, show us your pictures as well. Send us your, your pieces of work, we'd love to see them. Especially if you're a, if you're a beginner to seed beading. And uh, as you can see, I'm using gemstones as, as well as seed beads. So we're using a bit of mother nature as well as, as, well as some man-made glass. So it's, you know, it's a fascinating hobby. So we're just coming up to the penultimate section. We're going to sew through. And then we're going to fill that last little gap. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to sew through the exterior once again. So again, every time we go round, we're strengthening the design, which is what we want. And what we're going to do is we're going to exit through the little 11 o green that we've just added. Now what we're going to do now, on every single one of the green that we have in between the 8 o silver, is we're going to do a little bit of right angled weave, otherwise known as a pico. Now, a few beginners to, to seed beaders out there, you'll get used to all these, you'll get all used to all these terms and, and technical terms. And uh, a pico is one of my favorite, but it's also known as right angled weave. It's not such a romantic name as, as pico, but uh, it says what it does on the tin. So what I'm doing, I'm exiting through this 11 o and I'm picking up three more 11s. So I'm exiting through the top of the bead and I'm going to go round and back through the same bead. So I'm just going to sew through. And what happens is you get this little diamond forming. If I just show you, you get this little diamond forming in the exterior. So we're just going to go all the way around. And again, we're going to be strengthening our work. We're going to go through, exit through the 11, do our little pico. So pick up three, one, two, three, back through the same bead, going further around the exterior. So we're going to go through and exit through. So you can see how easy this needle is going through, being such a fine needle, even though this will be my second pass through. So that's our third pico. Then we're going to sew through. There we go. Again, it's that, it's that jewelry maker term, wiggle through. So you'll, you'll soon get used to these little, <laughs> little mannerisms. And then we're going to pick up three to make our little pico. One, two, three. And again, we're going to sew through. This is our penultimate. And again, every time you do a little rotation around your, your piece of jewelry, you can actually stop or you add another row and you stop, then you add another row and stop. So you can actually go on and on and on making the most extravagant, beautiful jewellery just from adding a repetitive row. It's, it's, it's incredible. So do you like the colours we've chosen for these earrings? I just think the whole green and silver is a, is a beautiful combination. So um, you'll have to comment and, and let us know what sort of colour combinations you would use and, and what sort of sizes you would use. We'd be fascinated to hear from you. Okay, so that's our next little section. So you can see now our six picots around the outside. So just adding that extra row has, has embellished it. It's beautiful. So what I'm going to do next is I'm exiting through this interior bead. And what I'm going to do, I want to get to the outside. So I'm going to take my needle 
and I'm going to just follow and sew through the two beads of the pico. So one and two. So if I lay that down now, you can now see that I'm exiting from this exterior bead. So do you remember when we first added the first row, we had two silver beads with five of the green in between. So you can either work towards you or you can simply flip your work over and work away from you. Now at this point, I'm going to cut off my little tail because I don't need that anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the following combination. I'm going to pick up a green, silver and green. So two green, a silver and two green. And I'm going to jump the gap and I'm going to sew into bead number three of the group of five. So I'm just going to sew through. And again, you'll need some wiggling. There we go, so I'm going to sew into the third. And that fills the little gap. So we're exiting the middle, we're going to do exactly the same combination into the exterior here. So one, two, then a silver, two green. So I'm going to jump up to the point. So you can see we've got these nice little patterns starting to form at the bottom. So two, one, two. Two, one, two, and I'm going to sew into the middle of that group of five. And then the same, so two. We're just going to repeat this now all the way around until you get to the beginning of your earring. Okay, so that's your little flower motif, your little sunburst motif. And just from having these little silver beads in the exterior really makes it pop and come alive. So what we're going to do next is I'm just going to sew through my beads. I'm going to sew through the next little section. Because what I want to do, I want to get to this little pico here. I'm just going to sew in to here. I'm going to sew up through just the green beads, like so. And can you see now that we have a little gap in between this little section here? What I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up eight of our little 11 O's. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this will make a loop. So I'm exiting through this bead here. I'm going to go back across and I'm going to sew into the group of five again. So when I pull the thread, you can see now that we have a little loop. Now that little loop is going to take our shepherd's hook. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just sew away from that so I can tie off my thread. I'm just going to sew through. I'm going to exit through the silver. And I'm going to take my needle underneath through the back of that little loop. I'm going to pull my thread the size of a grape. I'm going to take my thread down once, down twice, pull nice and tight, and I'm going to then sew away from the bead, sew away from the knot, make sure we don't get caught. Right, nice and tight. Then I can cut off my thread and say goodbye to that. So that's our little earring shape. So all that's left to do now is to take our flat nose pliers. I'm going to take our shepherd's hook. I'm going to open the little loop at the bottom. And I'm simply going to place the loop from the earring over the loop of the shepherd's hook. Close that up nice and neatly. And there you have your completed sunburst earring. So as you can see from the pieces that I've got, to my right here, they're very luxurious, they're very simple, and as we mentioned in the introduction, a very quick make, really simple make, but quite an addictive make. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk about making necklaces using the motif 
for bracelet, let us know. Comment in the link below and tell us what you would like to see this motif made into. And if you like, subscribe to the channel and uh, we look forward to, to hearing all your thoughts and comments. So hope you like that amazing little technique with the sunburst earrings and um, keep these peeled for more tutorials.